What happened to Princess the German Shepherd? Are Marty the shutdown Mastiff? Well, good news. I have pup dates on all these dogs and even more happy adoption stories in this episode of Pup Dates. First thing we're doing is we're gonna go see uh, how Princess is doing. Let's go check up on her. Wait a minute. Where is she, Princess? So many of you fell in love with Princess just like I did and saw her story. But just as a refresh, she's the German Shepherd that when we found out her name from the microchip and I called her by her name for the first time, her eyes just lit up. Princess, you know your name. Did you get, did you see that? Did you see her perk up watch? Princess, hi, darling. Hi, Princess. You're a good girl. You're a good girl, Princess. Yeah, she knows her name. I usually encourage people, like, feel free to change a dog's name when you go. But she's a German Shepherd and she knows her name. And that's a huge advantage in training a Shepherd. Because if you've ever had a Shepherd or a working dog, you know that they, they definitely need guidance and training, structure, exercise. So to just have that little advantage right there, right out of the gate, even if you just use that as a nickname and, and until you start teaching her a new name. But I think we keep it princess for right now. Huh, princess? You're a good girl, princess. You're a good girl. Yeah. Here, good girl. Come here. You want a treat? Let's see if we can get you up. Let's see if we can get you out of this corner. Come here. Come here. Yeah, good girl. There you go. Okay, her card's still here. No, she's not on the dog walking program, so she's not out for a walk. Oh, no. Where is she? Oh, there you are. I didn't eat. Oh, darling. Look at that. She's still going straight to the corner. Oh, man. Hi. Hi, Princess. When I saw Princess out in that yard and I saw her still going straight to the corner because she was so scared, I knew I had to go in there and just spend a little time with her. I sat in the chair and just tried to relax, allowed her to relax. She was taking some treats from me. And there was this husky, next door neighbor, doing what huskies do. <laughs> barking like a maniac, talking about it as much as they could. If you know huskies, you know they never stop talking. I had to do something because she just needs some calm and some peace. So I thought, what if I take a piece of treat, throw it to the other side of the kennel, even if that just calms things down for a couple minutes, let's try it. It worked. That's really nice. It's good to see her just have a moment where she can be calm. I'm celebrating a little bit because there's all these little moments that helps really develop her and get her out of her scared state. And there's another thing to celebrate. As I was spending time with her, I got a call from Alexis and she tells me that someone is actually here to do a meet and greet with Marty right now. Just in case you don't remember about Marty or you didn't see his video. He's the dog that came in in a complete fear state, just pancaking to the floor. I spent time with him. I came back a couple days later, his tail was wagging. We went on a walk and although it looked like he was really shut down, he was really good progress. So now to think that somebody's here for him and could potentially be adopting him we gotta go see what's going on. Now, uh, meet and greet for Marty is here. So, okay, sweetie, I'll be back. You're doing good. You're doing good. This is big. Let's go check it out. Is he out here? Is this Marty? Yeah. Yeah. The minute we get out there, it seems like it's not going so great. Their dog is getting upset. Marty's kind of panicking a little bit, and we know it only takes a little bit to get him back into a fear state where he just shuts down. At this point, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Well, that's a good sign. It's okay. Marty isn't reacting back. That's really good. Yeah, the tides are turning. Good reminder, even for me, that sometimes it just takes a little patience. You gotta give the dogs time to get to know each other. Get this, I talk to the family and I find out that they've driven over four hours just to come see Marty. 
I love these guys. What, what do you guys think? You think this is uh, yeah? They're they're getting together enough that they're getting along. We have plenty of room, so it's like yeah. So yeah. you think this is an adoption? Oh, definitely. I'm starting to celebrate. I think this could be an adoption, but no, we run into a roadblock. He's not neutered, and they live out of the county. He's gotta be neutered before he can go. Now you're probably wondering why the shelter just doesn't take a dog in and spay or neuter, and why this has to be done off-site. Well, that's because they have taken on an unbelievable feat to build an entire low-cost spay and neuter facility right next to the shelter. It's been years in the making, planning and building, and it's almost ready to be open. But right now, the shelter's relying on outside spay and neuter support. For a moment, I'm thinking this is the end of the line, but I gotta do something. I gotta try something. I gotta do this for Marty. I'm gonna go see if I can talk to the team and if there's anything they can do so that we can try to get an exception or or something to help him go home with his family. I just brought this little girl in. Oh, Princess. Princess. Oh, good. She's so scared. She was terrified out there. But she's so sweet. She is. So we're gonna let her decompress in here. Okay. She, as dogs come in, they start out in the outside area most often, and then the inside areas, they're just quieter, and the dogs can just decompress quite a bit. So this will really give her a better chance of getting adopted. It's day five of the 10 day hold to see if her owners come to see her. Every day that goes by, it's usually less likely that the owners are gonna come, but you never know. I've seen it happen on the very last day. They reunite. The good thing is she's in a better situation now. And there's not anything we can do right now. Make sure you subscribe, that way you're getting updates. Uh, I'll keep all of you guys updated on Princess's progress. Okay, hold on, hold on. I, I gotta tell you something, because I just got notes from the shelter about Princess, and I don't work at the shelter every day. Everyone's always like, updates, 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 but. Look, I go, I'm an ambassador for the shelter. I'm there maybe a couple times a week. So when I get notes from the shelter and it's titled Important Princess, I like, I freeze. My heart drops. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to every single one of you who fell in love with Princess as much as I did. I mean, we went trending on YouTube. That's wild. We're a dog rescue channel. We're not supposed to trend on YouTube. And, and who cares other than the fact all of you saw Princess and it just increases her chances for adoption. And that makes me so happy. So many of you reached out to the shelter and sent really positive notes about her. And the shelter takes so much heat. So for example, the shelter got an email from Jess. Thank you, Jess. It said she just wanted to reach out to the team and say thank you uh, that Princess brought tears to her eyes. I'm kind of summarizing here. And uh, she had a German Shepherd who passed a few years ago and looked identical to Princess. And her name was also Princess. They adopted her and her brothers as seniors and after her owner went into hospice and had a couple wonderful years. And so getting to see that again really brightened her heart. And sending that to the shelter is awesome because the shelter team works so hard and they're trying as much as they can to help all of the animals that they can. And it's hard sometimes. Okay, but Princess, what about Princess? What happened? The other news? She's been adopted! Yes! I love it! Get this. So this is a picture of Zachary and uh, he came down to adopt Princess because his grandma watched the video and she sent it to him and said this, you gotta get this dog before somebody else does. This is an amazing dog. I agree. Zachary, congratulations. He's gonna send his picture and video updates, but not until she decompresses. We want her to take that time and just receive the love that she deserves as an amazing German Shepherd. Princess, thank you for letting all of us be there for you in that moment. And I can't wait to see where your life goes from here. Look at this, Princess isn't the only only amazing pup date I have in this video. There are some awesome adoption stories and pup dates coming up. I want to show you these two little ones that caught my eye, especially the one in the back. Those eyes are just so sad and they're just gluing themselves to the wall. Let's go in and sit down and find out what's going on with this duo. Hi. Hi. Hi, are you so scared? Hi, you, you're being very protective, huh? Certainly they're siblings because anytime I get, watch, anytime I come over close to this one, he is really watching me. Hi. Hi. You don't have to be scared. It's okay. Did I just meet two of the sweetest dogs at the shelter? I think so. Are you going to jump in my lap right away? Is this gonna be the fastest sitting with dogs scoop ever? Come on. Come on. Come on. Hi.
I mean, is this not the cutest moment in the history of sitting with dogs? <laughs> Look at this. How in the world did you get here? Okay, so I didn't even see their kennel card when I came in. Now, it was funny because in the last sitting with dogs that I did with Princess, the German Shepherd, a lot of people commented like, well, you don't know anything. Why don't you check before you go into the kennel? I don't want to make any assumptions before coming into the kennel. I get to just kind of check out the surroundings and really assess what the current situation is in the current environment, regardless of the history. But Alexis is always close by and Kelly and they have the computer and access to the shelter system to be able to check notes. They can go talk to the staff while I'm sitting here to get any additional context we need. What are we gonna do? What are you doing? Hi. What are you chomping at? You have a chomping going on with, t I think maybe there's something stuck in your teeth. And I wish I could help you. I don't know if we know each other well enough yet. I feel like you're gonna wanna chomp me. Have you guys ever seen anything like that? What is, has your dog, have you ever had a dog do that? What is that? I think you want back in my lap. Is that what you're asking for? Wasn't paying attention to that. I'm sorry. You see how though he is always inspecting what he's doing to make sure he's okay? He's like the protective brother if they are siblings. Let's find out. Let's get the information from Alexis from the system. Do they have any names? So the one in the front is Buddy. The one that's in your arms is Bucky. Buddy and Bucky. And are they siblings? So according to notes, it's suspected that Buddy is the dad and that, you know, Bucky might be one of the kids. They actually came in with a group, a, a total of five. Five? Put in Night Drop. When they tried to reach the phone number left behind, it's out of service. So they don't even know if these are strays or if these are owner turn-ins. They just have to guess and keep them in holding. It would make sense that this is dad because he's very protective of son. Five of them all put a night drop. It's so frustrating, especially when the, when the notes aren't there. Now look, I always want to think best of people. Sometimes we all just need a little financial help, right? And the shelter has that. They have meal plans people can go on where they can get them food. They have organizations who can help with financial support. So the help and the support is there. What is a dead end is when someone leaves a fake phone number or doesn't leave any information and just drops all these dogs off at night drop. Another thing that happens sometimes is when people are breeding dogs. They don't want their information out there. They don't want the shelter to know about them because they don't want to get caught. Do we know where the other ones are? They're next to them. So their siblings or children are next door. This little guy right here, Bucky, just wants so much affection, which is really nice because he was so scared just in the back corner. Hi, and you just really want love, huh? These two, these two are the sweetest dogs. How long have they been here? They've uh, been here for almost a week now. So they are uh, available now. The good news is they're available for adoption and these, any of these dogs would make amazing family members. Now I know what everyone's gonna say. Someone's got to adopt them all together or these two need to be adopted together. And you know what, if you can do that, yes, 100%. More importantly is we need to get each one of these dogs into a loving home. So I'd love to see them go together, but it's just not always practical. And if you say, no, no, they need to go together, you gotta ask yourself, can you come adopt all of them and take them all home together? <laughs> probably, probably not, right? It's hard. It's hard enough adopting one dog, let alone taking home five. Yeah. Let's get them all into good loving homes. Hi. <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> you seeing these guys? Oh my goodness. Make sure you're subscribed and following along because I will keep everyone updated. Let's get them some treats because they're good dogs and they deserve that. Yeah, good dog. You're a good boy too, you're a good boy dad. Here you go. Look, you get one too, let's see. Does your mouth hurt? Can you take it? Yeah, he's taking it, okay. Well, that's good. Here. You like treats? Yeah! Good boy. Okay. I love both of you and thank you for spending time with me and thank you for coming out of your shell and hopefully we get you guys into loving home soon. Oh, but wait, because I have pup dates. Buddy actually went home and he's been adopted and Bucky, the even more shy dog, went home and has been adopted. <laughs>
How great is that? But I gotta share Bucky's adoption story because Bucky's new family shared this story with me and I, and I wanna read it to you. So Jackie brought her grandmother Nancy into the shelter after seeing Bucky on Facebook. And Nancy thought this could be the perfect dog for her because it turns out she's lost a lot in the last year and she kinda knows that feeling that Bucky's going through. So it turns out Nancy has lost her husband, her son, and her brother all in one year. And Nancy and Jackie thought maybe a dog could really help. And when Nancy met Bucky, she just knew right away he was the one. She brought him home, renamed him Kobe, which I think is a great dog name, but I'm a little biased. I have a dog named Kobe. And she says he's smart, well-behaved, loves her grandchildren. They've bonded quickly and she can't imagine life without him. If you're someone who shared that video of Bucky, thank you. You helped save him. He's now in a loving family. I couldn't ask for anything more. What are we doing? Look, someone's looking at Carly right now. Look. As a refresh, Carly was the dog that wouldn't move from the corner for days for the staff. She was in that freeze state. Her eyes told the whole story and she needed our help. And it looks like potentially someone is here to help. I don't know if they're just sitting with her or if they're thinking about adopting her. Can I sneak in the back way over here? Yeah. I think those gals might be interested in that dog, Carly. Yeah, she's here. They are? They are visiting with her. I'm trying to get her some treats for her. Oh, that's that's the magic cheese you're talking about. <laughs> they did. <laughs> that's smart. I can tell you've been doing this for a little bit. I'm a chihuahua person. <laughs> you know, you gotta get you gotta taste that nose. Oh, that looks good, look at that. <laughs> look at those special little treats right there. Yes. You go, yeah, okay, okay, can I follow you? Yeah. I love her so much. I see, I love her oh, so much. She recognizes you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's just the, the you know, the, her eyes are so expressive. Yeah. And um, yeah. I was editing her video yeah. and like just bawling. Like, I just love her so much. She's so happy. Yeah. If I could adopt any dog right now, it would be her hands down. Yeah. She's going to need weeks, if not months, to really yeah. Yeah. come herself. We've had really timid rescues before. Oh, yeah. And we usually like bigger dogs, but yeah. we don't have quite a big yard anymore. Okay. And we have two cats they're pretty lazy okay but we want a smaller dog so that way if they don't get along the dog doesn't like accidentally brutalize our pet <laughs> <laughs> you guys live around here no we live in orange county it was like you came all the way from orange county for you? Sure. uh thank you even if you don't end up adopting thank you for just coming to show her love yeah. uh, but what do you is it maybe too early to know but what do you think if it's an adoption she's very sweet uh, she's she's a little bit. Yeah. She's not quite. As she was sweet. shaking when we walked yeah. in here, and now she's a little bit still, and she's taking cheese. Uh, did you see me going for the ask if they wanted to adopt Carly, but they weren't they weren't 100% sure? Yeah. Yeah. I, I might have been a little too soon. Too soon. I too exited soon. the room. I want them to make that decision. Like, you don't want to pressure them too much. They saw the video. They came down here. They drove all the way from Orange County. What in the world is with how awesome you guys are driving for hours to come join me in helping these dogs? Like, I love you guys so much. But. I don't think we can celebrate just yet because it's not like she's gonna open up to them. She's gonna stay, remain shut down. So it's really, are they willing to take on this rehabilitation project? I mean, you know, right? Like with Blossom, that was a nine month process. Yeah. She For people don't, who don't remember, tell them about Blossom. Uh, she was part of a hoarding case. She had never been outside and she just like hiding under the bed or in the corner and it took months and months and months of just letting her be until she'd finally like eat out of your hand and it was like six amazing. months before she ever wagged her tail yeah and i think carly's gonna be the same way okay but marty what's going on with the plan with marty so these nice folks drove from arizona and uh they want to adopt marty yes the challenge is he's not here yes and they're like we'd love to take him now because it's going to be tough Going we to would need to go to Chief and see what she says. About I talked to Chief. About what it, yeah. You, do you have a minute? You want to try to go yeah, talk to her with I mean, me? Yeah, that's what we would need to do is make sure that Chief is on board with it. We're walking over to see Chief and we realize, well, what about the other dog? Is the other dog a spade? No, she's not. That's not good. Because <laughs> a dog who's not neutered and a dog who's not spayed, well, puppies. We got to come up with another plan. Lisa is amazing. She jumps into action and she says, you know what, why don't I call and see if there's something I can do. If I can call in a favor and get them to squeeze him in today. Now this doesn't usually happen. If you try to get your dog spay or neutered, call any clinic around town. They're gonna schedule out weeks or months in advance because 
All these vet offices are booked up now. But Lisa, she's putting in a call anyways. Doesn't hurt to ask. I have a question for you. How are you guys looking today? <laughs> okay, well. He's about 80. Pounds. He's about 87. She's gonna check. This is spent. She's calling I back. No. Please, 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 please. I appreciate you selling it. The bigger the dog is, the harder the procedure is. And so yeah. if, if he was a little poodle male, it would be a lot easier to get him in. And the only thing is, is it is a male. So that's easier. Yeah. Hopefully we'll hear back from Krista and I can get him on there today. And I'm wondering like how fast they have to go back. Like, right, let me go find out. Okay, we've been working on the neuter plan. Uh, we're trying to see if we could get a same day appointment. Well, they're full, but we've called in a favor, so they're gonna call us back. Okay. What, uh, how fast do you guys need to head back? Uh, by nine o'clock tonight. Okay, by nine, okay. Uh, all right, well, let me see then. We're working on that, and uh, we'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Oh, appreciate that. See, typically what happens is uh, you go into the clinic. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Then we can do it today! <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay. I am so sorry, Marty. I apologize for the <laughs> Yes! Marty's going home! Well, he's going to get neutered and then he's going home. <laughs> I was so happy. We celebrated with a picture. I surprised them with a Furbo because Furbo is the sponsor of this video. Furbo for Good and myself have teamed up because Furbo for Good is helping with food, shelter, training, and so many more things that pets need. I'm happy to tell you that over 38,000 pets in need have been helped. That is fantastic. It's awesome to know that when you buy a Furbo, a dollar goes to the Furbo for Good Fund. Furbo has been helping my family now for years. With Kobe, it helps him so much balance out his anxiety because I can talk to him right on the mobile app and tell him everything's gonna be okay. I can even toss him a treat. It doesn't get better than that. And right now, Furbo is having one of the biggest sales of the year. So I'm gonna link it down below or just go to rockykanaka.com slash Furbo and get your Furbo and be a part of Furbo for Good and everything that Furbo for Good is doing here at the shelter. Guys, let's support the companies that are helping our efforts to help pets. Congrats, buddy. We'll see you, we'll see you soon, okay? Love you, man. You're doing, he's doing so much better walking. Yeah, that's gonna be great. He's got the dog bed, the dog food, and look, I'm sending Marty home with a bag of the, my treats. Yeah! And uh, plug, you can get a bag for your dog too. They're delicious. It's been like an hour and a half. They're still in there. Let's just, let's go ask them again. I think it's time. Are you making any progress? Okay, her head's up. She's taking cheese treat to see if she even yeah. reacts. Okay. So, okay, so you guys think cat test, and if a cat test goes all right, you think you like her? Oh, we love her. She's adorable. Yeah. I'll see you guys here in a minute. The reason I like them is because they want to do a cat test. Now, typically, you do a cat test. I'll show you how it works here in a minute, but there is no way Carly is reactive to cats, but the 0.01% that she might be and that they want to check that and do their homework for adopting a dog, I like that. Seems like our Carly passed the kitty test. And to me, the potential adopters passed a good owner test because they're being thorough to make sure it's a good fit. We got another one. These folks like to adopt Carly, but they didn't want to It says she's fixed. Oh, really? Does it? It says palpable and visualized scar. She's fake. Oh, great. Oh, she can go home. It says she's fake. I mean, let's, can we double check that, honey? <laughs> let's double check. Um, let's have health check take a look. I'm gonna go check if you confirm her spade, and I was gonna give her a nail trim really fast. Okay, perfect. We thought she wasn't spade, and then we thought she was. So they're just gonna check, just gonna make sure. Because you guys live out of area, if she's not, then you could take her on the day. But if she is, 
Also, we're covering the adoption fee because our the audience raised that. So Yay, just I yeah, love it. we got you. Cool. Yep. That's a thank you to you guys, by the way. I just told them we're covering the adoption fee. I'm not covering the adoption fee. Well, I'm covering half. You guys are covering the adoption fee because we went live and you all donated so that she could go home. I appreciate you. She was not spayed. She's not spayed. She's not spayed. Okay. No. Hopefully they take her. It seems like she really likes the I lady in there. Yeah, oh, I think they're gonna think, take yeah. her. We just now, we just gotta figure out the spade. Yeah. Point. Does she have to be fixed here? She's or? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go check and Let's see check. Like, what, sure. what she's sure. read and she feels like that she's kind of like her own home okay. with an appointment at your local head. Okay. Then I'm good to go. We yeah. raised like, uh, let me double check, it's like $285. So There's whatever the difference is, we'll cover that too. Okay. Yeah. Did she take the treats okay? She likes, she likes the cheese. I like the cheese. All right, it took a bit, but Lisa's back with the final update. You're killing us with the suspense here. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I spoke to um, Chief, and she said that if you can get an appointment with your vet, that she can allow her to go home today. Okay? Thank you, guys. She's such a hugger. She's shaking right now. It's going to be for the better, I promise, darling. You're going home. You're going home, Mama. Let's go. You're going home, darling. Here we go. Let's go meet your new family. Attention in the shelter. Animal Friends of the Valleys would like to congratulate Nick Cole for adopting Carly, our four-year-old Jack Russell Chihuahua mix. Congratulations. Here you go. Congratulations. Okay, here's your new mom. And then also we have a surprise for you. Verbo wants to thank you for adopting, so we are sending you home with a Verbo dog camera Yay. to help with the transition. So it should help with, so you can monitor her anxiety if you're leaving the house. Oh, good. wonderful. So that's thank for you. you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Much. Thank you guys for saving thank the life. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay. Are you guys keeping the name Carly, or are you gonna rename her? We think maybe Honey. Honey, honey. Oh yeah, you like Sweet, it, huh? Just like honey. honey. Hi, girl. Huh. But hold on, hold on. This is a pup date video. We're not done. I, I want to update you on how Carly's doing because she is one of the more frozen dogs I've seen in the shelter. She's been renamed Honey, which is still great. She still has that, you know, Carly, Honey, very cute. Nicole says that she is really doing great now. She allows Nicole to pick her up. Recently, she started following her everywhere around the house. She's starting to explore on her own. She gets along with the cat and her confidence is building just a little bit more every day. And get this, she's even learned a new trick. Nicole, thank you for adopting Honey. And Honey, sweet little dog, you are gonna be okay. Life is gonna be good from here. You remember this dog right here in the cone? Ranma, or then renamed Sonic, had to be rushed as an emergency to the vet. Now, I have updates on him, but his whole journey from being adopted and returned and then seen by one of the dog walkers at the shelter and that they just fell in love with him and this is watch it and then I've got a big update for you. Oh, Ranma the Malamute got adopted. <laughs> I know that's weird that I seem sad, but it's because he got returned. I always worry about these dogs when they get returned, just what they go through mentally. Now the team actually renamed him Sonic, which I love. Let's go check on him and see how he's doing. Oh, bud, I'm so sorry. You want me to come in and say hello? Okay, I'm coming in, bud, I'm coming in. I brought you something for being such a good boy. Here you go, bud. It's not your fault and I'm sorry. Hey, but listen. This is a happy moment because I get to see you again, and that makes me happy. And you got a giant treat, and that makes you happy. Like you, I went through a range of emotions from anger and sadness and frustration that he was returned. But for his sake, I need to put all of that aside because what matters most right now is this moment. It was just a practice run. We're gonna make sure that the next one sticks. I know people say you're a little extra work, and it's just because there's just a bit more of a reward at the end of the tunnel, huh? Anyone who gets a snuggle muffin like this has to put in some work and effort, huh? You're a good boy, and it's gonna be okay. Just a, a quick weekend jaunt to hang out with some friends, and now you're back here until you get your forever family. I don't know why I chose to wear a black shirt today, because <laughs> I'm gonna leave 
looking just like you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> You're such a goofball. <laughs> the thing is, I've hung out with huskies, but I've never hung out with a Malamute, and I guess I didn't understand how goofy they are. Or is it just Sonic? I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I let the members know right away that he was returned. And one of the questions I got is, does the shelter do a good job of screening? I've been to a lot of shelters and rescues, and screenings typically range from nearly not enough all the way to close to impossible. Like, do you have a 10-foot fence and an electric gate outside of that and no pool and just all kinds of crazy things that would exclude you from adopting a dog? Some of you may have even been through this. I've even been rejected in adopting a dog. Me? <laughs> oh, who would think as such? What? What is this, bud? Showing off your beautiful hindquarters here? What's going on? But I'll tell you this, that's, that looks too weird. <laughs> Come here. This shelter is one of the better I've seen in balancing finding the right person and the right dog. But what I really love about this shelter is they make a guarantee to take care of the animal first. So if it doesn't work out, they want the pet back no matter what. Because they want to make sure, first and foremost, that the pet is okay. I will say this, though. If you ever adopt a pet, you have to give it more than 24, 48 hours. I I really like the 333 rule that goes like this. The first three days are decompression. The dog's likely not gonna feel comfortable, might be overwhelmed, may not eat. They might test boundaries just because they don't understand them. Three weeks, they're learning the routine. They might start to feel more comfortable, develop love and respect towards the owner. They've learned some boundaries, might even start to be a little protective over their home. And three months for a dog to really settle in. That trust and that bond is being built. They feel like they're safe and they're not gonna get returned to the shelter and they're comfortable with the routine. Now might even be a good time to start socializing with strangers. But I've seen with most dogs, it usually takes at least this long. And the thing is, any dog that I have rehabilitated, either physically or mentally, has taken way more than 48 hours. It takes days, weeks, months. I mean, think about you. Whenever you move to a new place or you go to a new place, are you comfortable within 48 hours? Are you yourself? Typically, no. It takes some time to get acquainted, to get used to the space, to get used to the new people. I don't know yet, but we're gonna come up with a plan to get you the perfect forever family. I don't have any treats left back there, buddy. <laughs> what I do know about Malamutes, and I'm experiencing it firsthand, is they need a good amount of work. <laughs> but a big reward, huh? huh? Bud, he's a good boy. Look at this, can you see this? <laughs> Kinda. I'm still, I'm still working on a plan, buddy. We're, I'm not gonna leave today, though, without us coming up with something. What is this? Wait, what is this? Did you, hey, did you see this on Sonic? He has a hole. You know oh, what that's for? Oh, yeah, there's a volunteer that's actually interested in adopting him. Really? Yeah. Okay, let's go find Cheryl. She's the volunteer coordinator. We're gonna get some more details on this. This could be really good. I gotta find Cheryl. Oh, <laughs> distracted by this cute little dog. Hey, there's Cheryl. Let's find out. So it is a volunteer? Yes, it's a volunteer. A dog walker. She just became a dog walker oh. back in March, so she's gonna know what she's doing with this dog. That could be perfect. Okay, thank you. Cheryl's great. But the whole volunteer program is great. And I'm going to the front right now because we just got paged. So it might even be Sonic's potential adopter. Look, I just wanna point something out. She's a volunteer and you can do this too. Spend time working with dogs, be a volunteer for a while, and then you can sit with dogs. I'm not the only one doing it. Are you doing the adoption for Sonic? Yeah. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Right now. <laughs> but what right now? Are you? Well, there's a little, little snafu, but I'm hoping I can make it. Right. I kind of backed off a little bit when I heard about that snafu. I want to give them a chance to work it out. Hopefully, it's no big deal and we can work through this. But I don't know, guys. This this happens in real time, right? Like <laughs> sometimes there's some speed bumps. But oh, fingers crossed because Sonic needs a good home. I guaranteed him the right family, and who could be better than an actual volunteer that works here, that walks dogs and knows dogs and knows how much work Sonic would be, but how rewarding Sonic would be. Okay, but the thing is with Sonic, like what's the snafu? Is Sonic gonna get adopted or hey, you would know. Did we find out what the snafu was? So it's just because her pet at home is not spayed. What? Oh, I have a little Shih Tzu at home and she's not um, fixed yet and neither is he and we don't want puppies. So we had to make sure that we can get him an appointment to be neutered. Oh, and because I saw this on the wall, I had to immediately ask her why she wants to adopt Sonic. 
I follow the Animal Friends of the Valley website, and so I saw him posted there, but I'm also a volunteer dog walker, and so although he was adopted and returned, I got to see him yesterday when I came to do my volunteering, and super excited that he came back so I can take him home. We had a Malamute before, and the Malamutes are a perfect dog, and so he passed away in 2019, and we're ready for a new baby, and here he is. Sonic, you're going home, buddy. You're going home. Uh, attention, animal friends of the values. Congratulations to Cynthia for adopting Sonic, our last dog. They're going to their forever home. Here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> you're going home, buddy. Here you go, mom. Thank you. Hi, baby. could be a troublemaker. We got a Furbo dog camera for you. Oh my god! How oh my good god. is that? Yeah, so Furbo for good, so they're helping pets everywhere. They are sponsoring this and uh -huh. they wanted to give this to you. <gasps> Amazing! Yeah! Thank you All so right, buddy. much! I don't know about you, but my heart hurts when I find out a dog got returned, but it's often for the better. This is a perfect example of how Sonic is now in the perfect family and situation. Sometimes these things are just meant to be, and I am so happy. Sonic, congratulations on your new family. Every time I see Sonic going home with his new mom, it just makes me so happy, and because I just know she's awesome. She's a dog walker at the shelter, and that it couldn't be any more perfect. And let me tell you, she has been the right right mom for the job because it has been a bumpy ride. Now we reached out to Cynthia and we wanted an interview, but we couldn't get an interview because he had to go in to get neutered right away. The picture of him and his cone though is actually not from that. It was an emergency. She had to rush him to the vet because he had a large softball sized abscess that had to be removed right away. They didn't know what it was. Here's the good news. They got it out. It was not harmful. He is recovering and he is being the best dog ever from what we hear, <laughs> even though it's it's been a little bumpy to get to this point and he's got the best mom and it's just proof of it because she's spending a lot of time and a lot of money on making sure he's okay. And guess what? Cynthia gave him the perfect new name that is so fitting, Oso. He's a big bear. He's a big teddy bear. I think it makes a lot of sense. Cynthia, thank you for adopting him and thank you watching this because so many of you rooted for Ronma and Sonic, now Oso, to get into this loving home and he's there now. Thanks to all of you. Okay, but what about Emma, the sweet Rottweiler? I have an update for you, but first, her story. Sometimes I have to pass a dog by because they tell me that they're not ready yet through their body language and growling. Rottweilers are some of the sweetest dogs I know, but they can also be very protective of their space. And I wanted to respect that boundary, but I took a moment and there was something about her that was inviting. I thought it was worth a try to approach. Her eyes shifted from scared to curious. And sure enough, when I went in to sit down with her, she was cautious, but interested. Hi. You like treats? Rottweilers are some of the most kind, loving, gentle, protective dogs ever. I really love them. They're such great family dogs. And to see a dog like this just shut down in the shelter, a Rottweiler with so much confidence, makes me sad a little bit for sure. Alexis, do you know her story? Found by Good Samaritan by the airport. Name is apparently Emma. Hi, Emma. Oh, hi. Oh, he's a good girl. Now, Emma is on the dog walking program and she does really fantastic on that, which is really great. If you want to come volunteer at Animal Friends of the Valleys or your shelter rescue, wherever you're at, dog walking is one of the best ways to start getting involved. And you get to meet amazing dogs like this. And let me tell you, you can do what I do in so many different ways. Because if you get a dog like this that's shut down and you take them on a walk and you get to see them come to life, it's really neat because you get to see the best side of their personality. And when you do that, you can take pictures or video, you can share that on your social media. And so many times I've seen that happen and those dogs get adopted. In fact, at Animal Friends of the Valleys, someone does that on Facebook. Look at this face. Yeah. 
is so pretty. What a transformation in just such a short amount of time, huh? Here you go. That's if you've ever had a Rottweiler, you are immediately a Rottweiler lover. You can't have this breed of dog without falling in love. But they can be a lot of work, no doubt. They need guidance, and they need training, they need love, they need exercise. Now, I don't know how she got loose, but she was running around by the airport. The airport. The thing is, she's gonna need out of here fast. But if you're looking for a good dog, wow, she's it. Her darker complexion and the fact that she's a Rottweiler might cause her to get passed by. So I'm hoping highlighting her here and telling her story might just catch your eye. I'm just, I'm rewatching this on my computer too. It Sometimes it's hard to watch dogs in this state and it was neat to see Emma come around. And what's even better is I have some really good news. Emma has been adopted. Yes. Guys, big dogs are hard to get adopted out of shelters. So stories like this make me so happy. My daughter and he and I went to breakfast one day and my daughter and I just thought, let's just go to the shelter and see what they have. And we went there and she reminded me a lot of a dog that we had about a year and a half ago. I noticed right away that she did not even come to the gate of her kennel. She just laid there looking sad and then I it just was on the back of my mind we just had to go back there and uh, get her. We got her home and she is just an entirely different dog. She's happy. She can't wait to see what the other dogs are doing so she can follow. She conforms with the pack and you can almost see her facial expressions looking to see, oh, what do we do next? Oh, that's it? Okay, let's go do that. And she follows the other dogs. It's really cute. And despite initially wanting a younger dog, Jason and Mary just fell in love with Emma. We were so surprised that once we got her home, the puppy that came out in her, which is important for people that are trying to adopt puppies because you can very well get a very lively older dog that's just full of life. And she was. And she has the funniest little waddle with her walk <laughs> and her run. She still runs. She's, she's she Full of life. A lot more energy than Full I of life. She's very loving. She's very, you can see, <laughs> she's very attention needy and she's sweet. We have dogs in our house because we love that affection. When we go camping, we take them and she fits right in with our puddles and warmness. She loves attention. She's a hog, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other dogs try to get attention and she butts her way right in the middle. Try to get her pets. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> she was initially really scared to approach any one, dog or human, and now she is the attention hog of the whole group. Before adopting, keep an open mind for what fits with your dynamics in your family because you might be surprised. We were certainly surprised. It doesn't feel like there's any change in our lives. She fits right in. She is the missing piece to our puzzle. Emma, congrats. And thank you, Mary and Jason, for giving an older dog a chance. Now, this next dog I was curious about was a Great Pyrenees. I was walking by her kennel and she stopped me in her track. What Great Pyrenees doesn't? Let's go in and sit down with her. Oh, you are so skinny. I didn't even realize. What have you been through? You just need some love? I feel like you've given up here. Sometimes it's hard to explain, like, just the feeling you get when you're in a space with a certain kind of dog. But sometimes it's just like sorrow and sadness. And I try not to let that transfer, but I also want to be aware of it. Like, I don't want to dismiss that she's sad. Like, it's going to be okay. Look at this. As soon as I stop petting her, she starts whining at me to pet her. You want more pets? Here, watch. I'll stop petting her. Here, watch. <laughs> you want more love? You want more love? Okay. Her paw is the size of my hand. Look at that. I'm six foot four. Like, I have big hands. I'm sitting with this sad, great Pyrenees. Do you know what her story is? Animal control picked her up due to a welfare situation. So they think that she was used as um, like a breeding dog, unfortunately. And she was actually recently featured on 
on the couch with Bill. Oh, that's so good. They are really wanting her out of here. She's definitely a staff favorite. Oh no. No wonder you're so sad. Here's what a welfare check means if animal control brings a dog in. Animal control goes to the house, likely because there was a complaint or some concerned neighbors or good Samaritans said, hey, I don't think this dog's in a good situation. Animal control goes to that house. They try everything they can to work with that dog's family, the owner, unless it's really bad. And uh, one of two things will happen. If it's really bad, immediately they'll pull the dog or they'll try and work with the dog's owner, their family. But if they can't come up with a resolution or the family just doesn't care about the dog, then animal control will bring the dog into the shelter. And sweetheart, I am sorry, but that's what happened to you. The notes think that they were just using her to breed her and sell great parodies, which unfortunately I see a lot. And then these great parodies, they end up in the shelter because they're a majestic breed, but they're very specific. They need a lot of work. They need a lot of space to roam. They need daily walks. It breaks my heart. It's no wonder she's so sad. Hey, but baby, I got something for you. I got something for you. Something you probably haven't had enough of in your life. Look at this. I got a treat. Do I treat? There we go. Treats are often about how much I trust you. It has to be an element of trust to take a treat. And of course the treat has to taste good. For some dogs. Some dogs will eat whatever you give them. <laughs> but you did here, you have you can have the rest of that. You deserve it. Look at that goofy derp face. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and if you look close to it, you can see she's had lots of puppies. Backyard breeders that just use dogs like this to make money to sell puppies will neglect these dogs. Like all of the signs are there, right? She's super skinny. She's really sad. She doesn't really know how to take treats, if that's a good thing. She's probably never been given treats. She just wants affection really bad. Look at that. She, oh my gosh. Certainly no one's taking the time to pet her off her head because they're just using her to make money. You're amazing. I'm sorry no one's ever told you that. Look at what a little bit of love will do. Look at that wagon tail. Hi, you're a good girl. And look, Chiquita can go home with you today. And what I love about this is her adoption fee is only like $50. And look, she's already been spayed and she, wait a minute. Wait a minute, there's a hold on her. That sticker means that there's a temporary hold on her. We'll come back, we'll find out what's going on with that, we'll come back. Chiquita's hold didn't come. They're not coming, I found out. I guess it was a hold that yesterday the person called and said it's not the right dog for them, so they never came. Chiquita's not going home today, but I had an idea. What if we went live, and we did, and I am blown away by how many of you got on there and hit that heart button and liked and commented because she can feel that, like she knows that love definitely transfers. Okay, so she spayed, she'll have adoption fee covered, and then we just gotta share this and we can get the word out, we can get her adopted, or if you live locally, come up, um, say hi, and adopt her. And a big thank you to all of the members, people who have joined the channel. I know it's a small monthly fee, but it makes a big difference. And the fact that you get notified and all of you jump on there because we're a community, I just know it means the world to me too. Some dogs I just worry about more than others, and Chiquita was one of those, largely because she's really sad and she's a great Pyrenees, and great Pyrenees are hard to get adopted because they are nomadic, they are roamers. They're not <laughs> like the most cuddly dogs all the time, and they need a lot of maintenance and care. They can be a really challenging breed. Amazing, but challenging. But I have good news. She's been adopted! <laughs> yes, Chiquita! Marina and Joran found Chiquita because their friend was actually turning in a stray at the shelter and sent them that info. But as they were cruising the website, they saw a picture of Chiquita. I saw her picture and she just looked so sad. And you could just see like a whole story in her eyes. Joran had really wanted us to get a big dog. Yeah, I'm a big dude. I kind of like big dogs. <laughs> As soon as they opened, I was there and I met with her and I said, yeah, she's she's the one. And you could just tell like that she had been through a lot, had so many litters. She was so skinny. Those dogs can be harder to adopt out. You know, sometimes people just don't give those guys a chance. They changed her name to Freya. And when they got her home, she was initially really shy and modest and just like she was in the shelter. I'd say the first few days she was pretty shut down. I think she had like no idea what was going on for a while. She didn't even like want to leave the backyard.
backyard. Um, she didn't want to go through a door. You could tell she was like happy and relaxed here, but just really unsure still. Um, and then, I mean, that first day where she picked up the toy. When Elsa, our other one, started getting some toys and playing with them, then you kind of see her kind of come out and slowly, can I get one of these toys? Can I grab that toy? And then just going to town, having fun, act like she's just a little pup when she's got the toy. It was so cute. I mean, it was adorable. Pretty much like just she was a to puppy. see her, yeah, come to life, like that she could play and she plays with them every day now and uh, goes and buries them outside and stuff. It's pretty funny, but there is a, a transition. At first they're scared and unsure and they need to adjust to their new lifestyle. So just be patient. I would definitely say have an open mind. Don't always kind of go into it thinking, oh, I want a puppy. It's, it's like they feel or sense something like you kind of saved them or you gave them a second chance. The loyalty, the love, <laughs> the cuddles that they love to do where they'll just want to come up and just give you tons of love. Like every time I come home, yeah, they are so excited. excited. And they say she's the easiest dog they've ever owned. That is awesome. Thank you for adopting her and giving her a chance. She's such an awesome dog. Wait, remember Champ, the wiggly boxer that wouldn't actually let me sit down with him because his energy was off the roof? Oh, I love him so much. I love boxers. I love all dogs, but if I had to pick one, it would be a boxer. But all that energy, that's a lot for one adopter. And so I've got updates on how he's doing and uh, we couldn't actually get an interview. So let's rewatch his story and then I'll tell you what happened. I work really hard to show the positive side of dog rescue. And I'm gonna continue to do that with my boy Champ here. But going in to sit down with him, my head was heavy because it hasn't been that long since I lost my boxer flip. And I thought the minute I sat down with him, I was gonna start bawling like a baby. Yeah, so the thing is, I'm trying to report you here. But Champ had other ideas. <laughs> he was not gonna let me sit down with him. His little goofy, fun spirit is the exact reason why boxers are one of my favorite breeds ever. Jack, sit, sit. They're goofy, loyal, strong, courageous, and that face. Maybe, Alexis, we try to get him out of the yard. <laughs> Remember, sitting with dogs is really trying to facilitate what might be good for the dog. And for Champ, it was not gonna be me sitting down. So getting him out in the yard to get some of that boxer energy out was, I think, the right thing. He's got that happy boxer face on too, which makes me really happy. But let me tell you, it was like a punch in the gut when I found out that Champ's family knew he was here. It had been days. And they still haven't come to get him. Now, no judgment, but if my dog got away and he was at the shelter, I would be there the moment they opened their doors to scoop him back up and take him home. All right, not, not too much of a toy guy. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cute. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> sit, champ, sit. What? And I think he would have kept playing outside even longer, but it's hot. He's a short snout dog, so we have to be very careful because that outdoor area can get really warm. Champ's been on my mind since I was here last week, and so I wanna go check on him because his family didn't show up. Remember, I said, why wouldn't they just be here like the day they found out he was here? Well, because they didn't really want him in the first place or they couldn't keep him or something. I don't know. Buddy, hi. Hi, Bubba. Hi. How you been, my man? It's good to see you, buddy. You wanna go out of the play yard? Come on, let's go. Officially, the family said that they didn't wanna come get Champ because there were allergy problems. And so they were trying to figure out if it made sense to come pick him up from the shelter or if they would just leave him here because their allergies were too bad. Maybe. I suspect it's an energy thing. He's got a lot of energy. And before you can even start to interact with Champ, you have gotta wear him down, watch. So I take him out into the yard and we just spend time together. I distract him with a toy, with treats, just kind of redirecting him so he's not jumping on me. Try to wear him down a little bit. And sure enough, after a while, he started to wear down. Now, it's quite a bit of time. Yeah, that only took like 
25 minutes. But we're good, but that's good, that's good. Like, it, it proves he's a good dog. If we can accomplish that in this small space, imagine what a walk or a run would do for him. It would get him perfectly balanced. You know what, you get a treat. I'm gonna give him the whole stick for being such a good boy. Good boy champ. And from there, the loving and the clown part of the boxer comes out where they're funny and fun and cuddly and wiggly. They do the boxer bean where they like stick their butt around, the boxer wiggle where they go like this. <laughs> See this? You know what it is? It's a hold sticker. But you know who it's for? Yes. We got a hold. Yes! Champ? Might be your day today, buddy. So you got any treats? <laughs> That was so cool. I was walking by the front desk and they're like, hey, do you want to put this sticker on Champ's folder? And I said, absolutely I do. Hopefully, someone actually shows up now. These holds, I'd say they're like 50-50 of do people actually show up and adopt the dog. It's getting to the end of the day and the hold for Champ still stands, but no one's shown up. And they've got maybe like 28 minutes. I just, I don't want Champ to go without a really awesome home. His last family was just kind of eh about him. I want Champ to have a family that loves him, that wants him, that needs him. And it comes down to 28, probably 27 minutes now. Oh, the stress sometimes. We're gonna hope the best for Champ. We're gonna believe the best. See if this works out. Look, I'm not even joking. Three minutes. We got three minutes for someone to show up for Champ. Guess who's here? What? Uh, the person who's gonna adopt Champ. No, uh, yeah. really? Yeah, up she's front? up front. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So are you here for Champ? Yes. Are you, are you done? Are you filling out the paperwork? Uh, I think we're just filling it out. Okay, we'll come back, we'll come back. Okay. Yes! Guess what, buddy? You're going home! You're going home! Yay! Attention the shelter and the shelter in the valley would like to congratulate Celeste for adopting our boxer champ. And Romeo, what a good name. Champ's like a nickname, Romeo. Oh, perfect. Okay, so if you remember, Champ was renamed to Romeo. They let us know that as they were leaving the shelter and they went home with him. And I wanted to check up because he's a high energy dog and sometimes high energy dogs are hard to handle. But get this, she couldn't do an interview. And the reason she couldn't do an interview is they're working out that energy. They have Romeo camping with them. She let us know that he's really been doing a good job adjusting and they're camping by a lake and he absolutely loves the lake. She said Romeo fits their family so well that he curls up right next to her and just uses his striking handsome face to get her attention and love and that he's a head turner anytime they go anywhere everyone wants to say hi to him and i understand i felt the same way so romeo congrats buddy what's going on with redford redford is the dog that we did a dna test kit now if you know anything about pet dna test kit they can take a long time months to get the results sometimes and redford was at the shelter the whole time let me share his story but stick around because i have a really cool pup date about him Oh, I gotta tell you about this beautiful red dog right here named Redford. Now, I sat with him a couple weeks ago, but I quickly noticed a few, well, red flags. Watch how he reacts to any sort of fast movement. You see that? He flinches almost out of fear, almost like he's worried he's gonna get hit. And you can tell a dog hasn't had a lot of treats sometimes by the way they take treats. They don't know how to take them. And look how he's more comfortable at the other side of the room. Hey, look, overall, Redford is very sweet, but he's gonna need some time. Wait until you see Redford now. It's a couple weeks later. He's a completely different dog. And when I left, I could not stop thinking about him. Like, what kind of dog is he? He's he's obviously Shepherd, and what else? So I got a DNA test kit. It's like $90, but I, this is worth it. Like, when, when you gotta know, you gotta know. And it will just help his family, whoever adopts him. Like, now they'll know. I haven't even uh, done a DNA test kit on my dogs, but it is fun. 
especially when they're this unique. Like every dog's unique, but there is something about Redford that is magical. It is helpful when you do a DNA test kit in regards to understanding what the dog, like what their traits are. If he's mixed with Chow Chow versus Kelpie, those are two different dogs with two different needs. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, what's that? What? <laughs> Is that fun? Come here. Yeah. You're so different than just a week ago. He was so scared when I sat with him earlier. <laughs> you let me do it. That's really sweet. <laughs> that tickle your whiskers? <laughs> okay, good, good dog. Oh, I definitely got some slobber on there. All right, got a few samples. Now we just got to send them in. I will say though, just look how different Redford is. He's playful and trusting. It just goes to show how awesome the staff is here that have been working with him every day. Okay, I'm packing up Redford's DNA test kit. A, a lot of you ask me like, how can I help? How can I be a part of this? And one way to help is just to become a member. For a small monthly fee, you get to do this with me. You get to be on this journey with me. And you're the first to know about things like when dogs get adopted, or you'll be the first to know about Redford's DNA test. Like what is he mixed with? I'll let members know first for sure. So just hit the join button and become a part of this dog rescue loving community. Who knows? Like I've made friends in there. You might make some friends too. It's just a really neat group. Would love to have you. All right, while we wait for the DNA test results to come in, I thought it'd be fun to ask some of the staff and volunteers what they think Redford is mixed with. Are you already cheating? No, I'm looking at his photo. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I guess you couldn't cheat, right? Because we don't have the results yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think Redford is mixed with? Um, maybe like Chow. Okay, German Shepherd and Chow. Alexis? Um... A setter or something? Okay, maybe? setter. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's what you, I was trying to No, do. you guys can do your homework. Maybe mixed with Kelpie. Kelpie, that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Kelpie. Kelpie's <laughs> a good guess. <laughs> so my guess would be some type of shepherd, but I'm thinking chow for some reason. I don't know if it has to do with the red. Maybe a little Akita or something in there, possibly. Okay. Um, that would be my, my guess. But yeah, you did on the couch with Phil with him, right? Correct. How did he do? He did great. He's, he's a real big softy. He's a little shy and nervous at first, um, but once he gets to know you, he's just like upside down, showing you his belly, just having a great time. Ciao. Red Wolf. Red Wolf, okay. I say ciao. ciao. <laughs> so apparently you can scan the dog with an app. Yeah, the latest update. You have it? You yeah, have it? I do. Okay, let's go do so it. Let's, let's go do it. Just try it. So yeah, you just take a photo and you click on it. Belgian Shepherd and German Shepherd. I kind of feel like you're making yep. this up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Belgian and German Shepherd is your guess. What do you think he's mixed with? Chow. Oh, so you're just copying me. No, you didn't. You changed your answer. No, I said Chow and Kelpie. <laughs> okay, you realize it has to be Chow and Kelpie for you to be right. If it's one of those, you don't get to go, oh, see, I'm right. That's not how it works. <laughs> yes, I mean, it good is. Rules. No, you can only pick one. I mean, it, unless it's Chow and Kelpie, then you would be really right. But I've never seen that before. <laughs> You've never seen me be right before? You better watch it. <laughs> I said really right. I've uh -huh. never seen you be really right. Oh, okay. Just yeah. semi right sometimes. Like, this is like, this is not going This good. is just the, the typical Kelly Rocky banter. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to see what the results are. Redford, Redford, what are you, buddy? It doesn't matter, obviously. You're amazing. But we have the DNA test results. Hey, we got the DNA results. You wanna I come? I wanna hear. Okay, come on here. Come on, let's go, come in. What did we guess? Do we remember? What you hold on? What did you guess? Do you remember? Yes, I said German Shepherd and Kelpie, is and that possibly right? Chow. You said Kelpie and Chow. <laughs> you Yours know. is a dual answer, mm. not either or. Well, depends who you ask. What <laughs> <laughs> the phone said German Shepherd, Belgian Shepherd. Okay, so you so said what I would be going with? Your Belgian yeah. Shepherd. Okay, what was your guess? I was saying maybe Kelpie. German Shepherd. I don't think what? he's mixed at all. I think he's a special kind. shepherd. Yeah. A very unique kind. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I think I think you're right. I think he's a unique shepherd, but I think yours might actually come up in the DNA test. Drum roll, please. 
take a look. Seven breeds. So 65% German Shepherd, 18% Australian Cattle Dog, 8% Chow, 5% Pit Bull Terrier, and 2% Shiloh Shepherd Dog. Wow. I think the Shiloh Shepherd Dog is kind of what you are alluding to, yeah. huh? Yeah. I think you're completely wrong what? and fired. Chow Chow's in there. <laughs> and you well, also, I was, I was, I you was can't was. be fired because we need you, but <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's that is wild. So you are a unique blend. You're like a house blend coffee. But he does have chow chow. He That's does have chow chow. He doesn't have the blue tongue. Yeah. He's well, kind of got a little streak. People in the comments when we when we made a video on him, it, a lot of people in the comments were just outrageously offended that we even suggested chow chow because he doesn't have anything on his tongue. Uh huh. But yeah. Okay, okay, read it one more time. 65% German Shepherd. Okay. 18% Australian Cattle Dog. I'd never guessed that. 8% Chow Chow. Okay. 5% American Pit Bull Terrier. Yep. 2% Shiloh Shepherd Dog. And 1% Lab and 1% Keyshond. Okay, just so you know, you said I was completely wrong. Yes. But I was 73% correct. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll keep you around for a little while. Yeah, I do the math around here in this family. So, you know. It gives you a family tree. So here's what Redford's family might have looked like. Okay. So his parents were probably a German Shepherd dog, and yeah. then it was a Pit Bull Terrier or Australian Cattle Dog mix that was like a mom or a dad of his. Cool. And then his grandparents were all German Shepherds except for one, which might have been a Cattle Dog or Pit Bull. Yeah. And yeah, it even goes up to great grandparents. <laughs> wow. Wait, what's it say? It says we found 22 of Redford's relatives. So look at it, it, Chip. What? I a have dog an idea. Chip is his son. Chip is his son? Some dog named Chip is. It says 50% likely it's his son. Can we reach out to those people? Or we can try. Why yeah. don't we reach out to those people and see if anyone wants to adopt him, right? Sure. Why not? Right. Let's do it. Yeah. What a cool dog. All right, so now we know what kind of dog he is. Now we just know what kind of family he's going to have. Let's get him adopted. That's fun. It's really fun to know what Redford is. Members, actually, you guys knew first. So thank you for being a member. Uh, you knew a few days before everyone else. It doesn't matter what he is at the end of the day, but it's cool knowing. And now we're going to put up this sign on the outside of his kennel. And so it's an extra piece of information that might actually help lead to someone adopting him. And he needs to be adopted. He's been in here for too long. Okay, so get this. There's this guy, Brandon, and he doesn't live very far from the shelter. So he comes over, he wants to adopt a dog, and sees Redford, connects right away, and adopts him. Yes, Redford has been adopted. Now, Brandon didn't know how hard we've been working to get Redford adopted, that we've been doing all these videos. He saw the DNA test kit, but it didn't matter. He just fell in love with him and he adopted him. And it hasn't been easy. Redford has been a real challenge just kind of adjusting into the home. But Brandon said, it doesn't matter. He's gonna stick with it. He's gonna figure this out. And Redford is starting to really warm up and come around. He shortened Redford's name to Red, which is awesome. He says he's gonna be his new beach buddy. Fantastic dogs in the beach. I couldn't think of anything better. So Brandon, thank you for adopting him. And Redford, congrats, buddy, on your new family. Let's talk about Sophia. I just want to remind everyone that most often when I'm at the shelter, I'm looking for the dogs that are challenges, that people are passing by, that are struggling in the shelter. And so sometimes these dogs get returned. And sometimes when someone returns a dog, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, right? They tried and it may not be a good fit. Like the first family that tried with Sophia, they were awesome and, and they tried, but with all of the kids and the other dogs, it wasn't, it, ju it was just too much for Sophia. She needed a calmer environment, a different environment. And I think they made the right decision bringing her back so that she could find the right family. They tried and that's important. And some of the comments I get kind of blow my mind Mind that people say, well, why isn't the shelter doing better checks? Or why aren't they doing home checks? Or why aren't they, you know, I, I don't know. The shelter only has so many resources and they're one of the better that I've seen that balances making sure they do all the checks to see if this is a good candidate for adoption, but also not being so restrictive that they turn everyone away because they don't have a 20 foot tall double fenced yard, <laughs> you know, or just outrageous stuff like that. But Sophia and Connie Courses in general, they're very loyal dogs and they shut down when their human abandons them and it takes time for them to learn and to trust again. And while Sophia has ups and downs, she actually has a really happy ending story. So I wanna replay a little bit of Sophia's story to remind you how sweet she is and some of the bumps she's had. And then I wanna give you an awesome pup date. Hi, sweetie. What happened? Why are you back, darling? 
Now, if you remember, in a previous video of mine, Sophia was actually adopted. The family gave it everything they could, but with the kids and the puppies and Sophia's condition, it just didn't work out. And then she was adopted again and returned again. And I know what you're thinking. Why does she keep getting returned? Well, remember, a lot of the dogs I'm working with are the special needs dogs, the hard case dogs. It's why I'm focusing on them. Thousands of pets get adopted each year from the shelter and live happily in their forever homes. And very few of them get returned. But placing a shutdown Cane Corso is not easy. It's always so tough when a dog like this that's timid comes back because she doesn't know if this is safe in home base or if a home is. She came in with her mom and, and she doesn't have her mom anymore. So she's really going through that situation where she's kind of just lonely. You know, dogs can get lonely too. It's not just us. She's still so nervous. She's still so nervous, huh? Let me just tell you this, it's not your fault, okay, darling? It's not your fault. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. She's a good girl. You want the whole stick? She's not opening up to me, but I do know someone that she's really connected with. Why did she get returned? Hard to deal with puppies. She had an eight-week-old Chihuahua puppy and a 10-month-old Cane Corso puppy. Yeah, that's too much, huh? And then took down their 65-inch TV. <laughs> Just anxiety, you think? Yeah, because they left her they left her oh. loose in the home. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi, Mama Show for Show for Show for Show. She's so sweet, but yeah, she's just she's gonna need some like time to decompress, and mm -hmm. you can't just leave her in a big open space at home. Mm -hmm. What would be the perfect home for her? Someone that works from home. That's yeah, always there. Just be there with her. Yeah. You took the treat from her. Yeah, she will not take them from me. Like even if I put them on the floor, she won't take them from me. Yeah. Look at that. Well, look at that. This is good because it shows how sweet she is. Because mm -hmm. like when I was in here with her, she was not having it. You want this? I don't think she watched my watches my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> you want that? Hey, uh, so Sophia is back. She got returned, but I'm sitting with her right now, and I just, I'm in love with her. We gotta figure out how to get her adopted into the right home. Um, well, she actually does have a cold, uh, so it looks like somebody is coming for her. They're driving right now to do a meet and greet. Really? Right now? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just seeing oh, it in the notes, like right now. Yeah, sorry, I scared her, I got too excited. <laughs> okay, that's really great. Okay, I'm gonna give her some space so she can decompress before her potential new mom is here. We'll check in on her soon. Sophia's meet and greet is actually happening right now. Well, let's go see how it's going. At this point, my heart is pounding, it's racing because there's so much at stake here. Sophia really has to find the right environment to thrive in. But as I started talking with her potential new mom and seeing how everything was going, I really saw that this could be it. This could be the right situation. Super high energy, but right. when he likes to play, he likes to play, and then he goes, you know, and just hangs out and sleeps. So. Well, with his a little higher energy and her lower energy, maybe it could be a good match. Right. This is all going really great. And she definitely is showing signs that she wants to adopt Sophia, but only if Sophia can pass the cat test because she has a cat at home. So here's how it works. The staff grabs a cat that's generally happy and friendly that doesn't get too stressed out. And they put them in a crate in the room with dogs. Now dogs that get really aggressive with the cats are likely not cat friendly or are going to take someone experienced that can help work the dog through this situation. But Sophia wants nothing to do with the cat. And this is very good because it likely means she she just wants to mind her own business. She passed the cat test. So now all we gotta do is ask mom what she thinks. Mom said, let's do it, high five! Let's go tell Sophia. You going home, baby? You going home? I know it's been a little bumpy, but you going home, girl? 
Sophia's not going home today because she's got to get spayed and then mom's going to come back and get her, but she is adopted. And that makes me so happy. After spending time with Lisa, I just felt like she was the right mom for Sophia. She brought her home, renamed her Gigi, cute. Lisa updated us and she said, yeah, you know, there have been some challenges. She's got some separation anxiety. She's been chewing through things she shouldn't chew through. But Lisa said that she sees those as minor things in the big picture that they will work through. Are you kidding me? This is why I love dog people because they are giving and they are kind and they're understanding and they're willing to work through these sorts of challenges. If you've ever had someone not give up on you, adopting a dog and not giving up on them is a great way to repay that. I want to read this word for word because we wrote it down because I love it so much. Lisa explains that she believes her journey to see Gigi blossom completely will definitely take some time, but she's looking forward to each and every day as they make progress. She said that Gigi's acting less introverted with each passing day, wagging her tail more, and overall is looking more excited about life. Amazing. Thanks, Lisa. And Gigi, congrats. I want to pull a really sweet dog out of the archives, Greta, because remember, a rescue group pulled her from the shelter, and I updated all of you on that, but still, she didn't have a family, and she had to go into an emergency surgery. Let me replay her story just as a reminder, because I fell in love with her the minute I got an opportunity to sit down with her. I gotta tell you about this next dog, and warning, it is emotional. This dog is skin and bone. If the owner comes to get this dog, they need talking to. This sweet dog has been nicknamed by the shelter, Greta. She may not look bad at this angle, but when she stands up, she's heartbreakingly skinny. Also looking at her, I think she was probably used to breed. Now she just got to the shelter, but the staff has already fallen in love with her and wants to see her get better. Despite everything she's gone through, look how quickly she jumps into the tub for Mel. She is just the sweetest thing. Look at her coat close up. She is extremely dirty. We're gonna probably have to wash her a couple times. I asked Mel what kind of life she thought Greta might have lived before getting to the shelter. Somebody's backyard that they didn't probably pay any attention to her. But she probably was infested in fleas. She has nothing on her now because they probably treated her when she came in. After washing her multiple times, it's finally time to dry off. I mean, ugh, look at that drain. <laughs> Greta started getting excited just seeing herself in the mirror. How cute. <laughs> This girl shows all the best parts of her breed. Look at how fantastic she's behaving. Now, the only time she got a little jumpy was when Mel found tree sap stuck on her neck. And trust me, I don't blame her. That sticky mess is on like glue. And all done. Look at her coat now. It's glowing. And the pink bandana is the perfect finish. Look, Greta's going to take time to get back to health, but she's going to be well worth it for the right family. You're a local celebrity. Have you read all the comments? No. You need to read the comments sometime because they say things like, Mel is a superhero. Not all heroes wear capes. Like, yeah, I'm glad that dog got groomed, but can we just talk about Mel for a minute? Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh. Are you yeah. Me? Everyone loves you now just as much as we do. Oh, Greta. We named her Greta, the boxer girl. How yes. was she? So sweet. I'm a boxer Have guy. You, I know. She told me that. Oh. And I tell you. I have never groomed or been around a boxer that was sweeter than her. Okay, I'm gonna go meet her she right now. She just captured my heart. I think you will she fall in sweet. love with her. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, go meet her. Okay, I'll go, I'll go see her. Okay, okay. I know you like that camera. I get, I get it, I get it. I have some treats. Do you like treats? Look, whoa, oh, here, here. <laughs> You're not very good at taking treats. <laughs> oh, it says shorts now. I'm sorry. Let, here, let me drop it from above. Here you go. Watch it. Watch this. Watch this. Is that funny? <laughs> She's got to have it come from the top. Here, you want, a, you want a big Mondo treat? Look at that. Good girl. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah, she, I mean, you can just tell from her nature that she's been through it, I, you know. I never like to put something on a dog that may or may not have happened, but sometimes you just feel it, you know? You just know, like, whatever she's been through, it wasn't good, and oh my gosh, you're like a drool machine. You boop in the camera. <laughs> Please don't eat the microphone. <laughs> okay, oh, it's a good girl. You wanna sit in my lap? Oh, okay, the scoop. Uh, oh yes. Maybe we, maybe we've kind of both been through it the last couple months, huh? I'm sorry. Whatever it is, girl, I'm sorry. 
I just want to pick her up, load her up in the truck, and take her home. I don't think Kelly would mind. <laughs> It's like just sitting here with the dogs. I do it for the dogs for sure, but it just also just fills such a hole in my heart sometimes. You know, here I am a couple months ago losing my best friend, a boxer, and here she is, a cute little sweet boxer that's been through it. As I was sitting there with her, I couldn't help but think that, I don't know, maybe Flip put Greta and I in the same path and somehow guided us to be together, even if just for a moment. It's like she understands me, I understand her, there's nothing else in the world that can do that but a dog. I always, I always go as far as to say a rescue dog. Well, and I was tearing up for sure, but I, I don't want to let her know that. I just feel like I just feel like it could be Flip's way of saying, "It's okay, Dad. I'm in an, I'm in a good place now. Where I'm at, I'm happy. While I'm not here physically, my spirit will always be with you." Just feeling her heartbeat, so calming. Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever you've been through, I am sorry. And from here on out, it's going to be okay. I promise. I promise. You need a butt scratch? You're so, she's so skinny. So skinny. She's even put on weight since being here. Ready? Hup, hup. <laughs> she's not leaving. You're not leaving? I gotta get up. I gotta get up at some point. Okay, all right, at some point, you're gonna have to, she's fighting it. <laughs> you're the sweetest dog I think I've ever met. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't easy to leave that room. I don't know how I'll take her home, honestly. Well, you would be happy to hear she does have a hold on her. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, she does. You might be going home, girl. You might be going home. Look at that sweet face. You might be going home. So here's what happened. Rancho Coastal Humane Society, an amazing rescue group that I've worked with before in the San Diego area, pulled Greta from the shelter, renamed her Guadalupe. <laughs> I love it. She was there for a couple days and the staff was falling in love with her. I mean, she was getting love from everyone climbing up on file cabinets. <laughs> it was wild, which is good because she happened to be in the vet's office when they noticed that something was really off with her. She was not feeling well and had started declining quickly. Well, that vet's intuition was correct because Guadalupe Lupe actually had a uterus infection and had to go into an emergency surgery. And it took quite a while for her to heal. She spent a lot of time with the vet staff and, and because of that, they just fell in love with her and she became kind of one of the vet staff team members. She wasn't available for adoption the whole time because she had to get better. And let me tell you this, thank goodness Rancho Coastal Humane Society pulled her because they have the capability to have vet services there. A lot of shelters and rescues don't have that. She went to the right place at the right time. And she was having the time of her life. And <laughs> one of the best dog rescue videos I have seen was Rancho Coastal Humane Society dressing her up as an in and out worker. <laughs> they made TikToks of this and it just stole my heart. Like, because she loved perching up on high areas. So cute. And because of all this promotion and the love and the work that they put into this, she found her forever home. Janelle and Joel adopted her. They said they'll cover any medical costs in the future. They set up a special bed for her in their truck so that she can ride around everywhere with them, wherever they go. They feel so lucky that they saw that in and out video clip. Yeah, we saw the in and out burger video and <laughs> we went first thing Saturday morning as soon as they opened. And then I guess another family wanted to adopt her too. So we're like, oh, thank goodness that we do not wait. <laughs> She's super smart. Like we put a bed down for her. Our other dog slept in the bed with us and we decided we'll see if she will sleep in her own bed. And she does. She just like cuddles up down on the floor. She has her little 49er blanket cuddled into the 49er blanket. <laughs> He's funny. I'm just hoping in and out gives her a free patty at some point because I think she deserves that at least for all of her promotion. Congrats, Guadalupe. You've been through it and you deserve this. 